good evening. Welcome to Cross the Ditch NC. My name is Laura. I'm so glad to have you here today. I've come out this evening to harvest some vegetables from our garden. So wanted to bring you along for that. And once I get done with that, I'm gonna take you inside and show you how to make some homemade vanilla extract. You definitely do not wanna miss that, so please stick around. If you like the videos that you've seen so far, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And um, there's also a little bell down in the corner that if you hit it, it'll send you an alert anytime a new video is posted. Now, let's go harvest some veggies. That is a German queen tomato. It is a pink tomato and absolutely delicious. My early girls. this out. Can you see it? Old Charlotte here, our riding spider that is guarding the tomato plants. And lots of little watermelons growing. Oh yeah, they are. These are my sugar baby watermelons. I have quite a few of them out here. That one will be ripe soon. And the way to know that the watermelon is ripe is when the tendrils that are attached to the vine next to it, when they start to turn brown and die off, which I'm trying to get this one up here, stand by. Then you know that that watermelon is ripe and ready to be picked. Watermelons. This plant has taken over between the vine of the watermelon and my sweet potato. It's actually quite beautiful. So I have a cucumber that has grown into the fence. And I thought about fighting it, trying to get it out, but decided against it. Decided to leave it and said, I'm gonna have to break it and have to get it out anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it there and let it get fully mature and start to yellow. And once it gets all yellow, I'm gonna break it out and then save the seeds from it. So if you ever have this happen to you, don't worry about it, don't fret. Just let the cucumber keep growing into that fence. Let it get fully mature, turn that yellow, almost orange color. And then when you break it out of the fence, save the seeds out of it, uh, ferment the seeds, put them on a paper towel to dry, and then you'll have cucumber seeds for free to plant next year. Same holds true if you have a cucumber that somehow got overlooked in your garden or seemed to quadruple in size overnight. Um, if it is just too big to eat because it's gonna get bitter, just leave it there, let it get that yellow orange color, fully ripe, and then cut it off the vine, scrape the seeds out, ferment them, put them on a paper towel to dry, and save them for next year. I got lots of little cucumbers ready to be picked up here. So some of these noodle beans are still small 
and good enough that we can cook them. Like I said in the garden tour video, we saute them with some soy sauce and honey. They taste really good. But some of them I have let dry up and I'm gonna pick these and take them inside and open up, sorry, <laughs> open up the dried seed pod and pull the seeds out and save them for soup during the winter time and also keep some of them for um, planting during the springtime. But isn't that pretty? Noodle beans grow on a vine and one of the best things you can do when you have limited space to garden is to grow upwards through vertical gardening. And when you create an arch with a $20 cattle panel from Tractor Supply, it makes for a really, really pretty vegetable art piece, I guess you could say. Check that out. I picked that from just a small area of the, back, the backyard garden and I'm getting ready to head to the big garden in my neighbor's yard to pick it. See, it is completely possible to feed your family using just a small area of your yard. Or if you don't have a yard, you can just plant some tomatoes and cucumbers in a pot on your front steps and grow fresh food for your family. All right, we are back inside and we are ready to make our homemade vanilla extract. Okay, let's talk about vanilla real quick. Vanilla is grown in only a handful of countries in the world, such as Madagascar, Mexico, Indonesia, and Tahiti. Vanilla, as we know it, is a fruit that is grown on an orchid located in these countries. This particular orchid only blooms for a short period of time during the year and when it blooms, people actually go in and hand pollinate the orchid so it will bear fruit. Once the fruit is ready to be harvested, it is then hand picked and cured for three to six months before it is packaged to be sold. That is one of the reasons why vanilla is so expensive or the, the vanilla beans are so expensive to buy. Vanilla has a multitude of uses. Um, the extract that you get can be used to, or it is used in a multitude of recipes. Um, also, you can put vanilla beans themselves into sugar and salt to flavor it. So to make your own vanilla at home, you only need three things. You need some jars to put your vanilla in. You can use mason jars. You can use um, clean glass bottles anything like that. You need something for the vanilla to steep in. Um, there's three things that are recommended. You have vodka. Um, this is, using vodka will give you the most clean vanilla taste. This will be closest to what you purchase in the store. You can use a spiced rum. Um, spice rum is extracted or distilled from sugarcane, so it'll give a little bit more of a sweet flavor and it'll actually give you like the most potent vanilla flavor to carry through. And then you can also use bourbon. Bourbon will give you that sweet vanilla flavor as well, but also with a little bit of a smoky hint. All right, so you may be curious as to what, where to purchase vanilla beans at. You can purchase them at your local grocery store or supermarket. However, you only get a few vanilla beans and they tend to be very expensive uh, when you purchase it that way. The way I purchase my beans is on the internet. I actually order mine off of Amazon and they come from Madagascar. Um, and when I order them, I order anywhere from 10 to 25 beans at a time. And it usually runs me about 20 to $30 when I order it. That may sound expensive to you. However, this will make multiple 
um, multiple servings or jars of vanilla. So this overall, when you look at purchasing bottles of vanilla extract in the store versus making your own, in the end it actually comes out being cheaper, particularly if you cook a lot like I do and enjoy baking and use a lot of vanilla, this in the end is actually cheaper. Plus, it can make a really awesome homemade gift to give to friends and family. So let me show you how to make the vanilla or the vanilla extract and how easy it is. Okay, so to make your vanilla extract, you first need to cut your vanilla beans. I'm gonna fight with this package. I go ahead and just take the easy way out. There we go. All right, so this particular package has 10 vanilla beans in it. So the first thing I want to do is cut my vanilla beans lengthwise. Now I am using half pint containers to make my vanilla extract in. So we're gonna use about two and a half beans in each, two and a half entire beans in each jar. So depending upon how many uh, containers of vanilla you're making is how many beans you actually want to cut. If you're not gonna use all of your vanilla beans, wrap them really tight in plastic wrap and then put them in an airtight container in your refrigerator until you're ready to use them again. So first thing you want to do is slice the bean lengthwise. And then you want to kind of open it up some because this is a bean pod, so you want to open it up so the alcohol can actually get into the bean pod and get to the beans themselves that are in the pod. And then you want to cut the pod in half. Okay. So we're going to do that for how many ever beans we need to fill the containers that we are using. So I'm using four. I love doing this because I love the smell of vanilla and when you cut the pods open, that smell gets really potent. Okay, so I have my beans, a total of two and a half beans per jar sorted out. Next step, pretty easy, put the beans in the jar. Once you do that, you are ready to put your alcohol into the jar, whichever one that you choose to use, or you can try all three. Once again, like I said earlier, I have only made it using vodka. However, I am super excited to try it using rum and bourbon as well. So we're gonna pour our alcohol into the jars. I'm gonna do two with rum, and then I'm gonna do one each of vodka and bourbon. And when we pour our alcohol into the jar, we're gonna fill it up to that first, first little lip of the rim. Make sure our vanilla beans are pushed down in there real good. Next, I am going to use the bourbon. And when you're purchasing alcohol to make this vanilla extract with, you don't have to buy top shelf expensive alcohol. In all honesty, you can buy the cheapest thing that they have and it'll work just fine. Matter of fact, when I went to the ABC store, I don't know much about bourbon. However, I asked them, hey, can you give me some recommendations for a cheap alcohol that's somewhat decent? They recommended this guy. Set that to the side and then 
we are going to make a one one vodka. Once again, you want to make sure your vanilla beans are submerged into the alcohol. There we go. Okie dokie. I'm going to try to keep my bourbon one separate from my uh, rum one that way. I'll, when I label it, I'll know which one's which. So when we actually get to taste the vanilla, we'll know which one we like the flavor of better. They'll all be pretty similar though. Okay, so what's your next step? Well, put a lid on it. <laughs> like I told you, pretty simple, easy to make at home. Just use regular canning lids or if you have a different type of container, it don't really matter what kind of lid it is, as long as it seals it. Tighten that down finger tight. And that's it. You have made homemade vanilla. Now, this is not ready to use in recipes just yet. This needs to sit and steep in your cabinet for a minimum of two months. The longer you let it sit in that cabinet, the better it will be. You will see a little bit of a color change with your darker alcohols, um, but it won't be too noticeable. However, with your um, vodka, you will see a noticeable difference in color after a couple of weeks. Once a week, you want to grab your homemade vanilla out of the cabinet and just give it a quick little turnover so those um, beans can kind of shake around in there a little bit. Let me grab the vanilla that I made back in April and show y'all what it looks like. This is the exact same bottle of vodka. Um, of course, obviously, this is what it looks like when you buy it, and this is what it looks like now. I made this on April the 14th. Let me find a glass real quick so I can pour some in it and show you what it looks like now. So this has been steeping in the jar. I've been just giving it a shake once a week, just a quick turnover. And as you can see, it looks like what you would expect vanilla extract to look like. So, once again, let this sit in a cabinet for a minimum of two months, but the longer, the better. The longer you let this sit and steep, the more potent that vanilla flavor is going to be. All right, so the great thing about making vanilla this way is you're not gonna run out. So, you have this sitting in your cabinet for a minimum of two months. Once again, the longer, the better. Mine's been sitting there for about four months and it's pretty good, but it wouldn't hurt to sit just a little bit longer. But when you have your beans sitting in this alcohol, it stores indefinitely. Um, so you can keep using it for as long as you need to. And then as your extract starts getting low, as you're using it, you can pour out the liquid extract and then just pour in some more alcohol of whatever kind you decided to use and then put it in the cabinet and let it steep for once again a minimum of two months. Um, it may take a little bit longer because it's a second round use but um, you'll have a new fresh batch of uh, vanilla after that. A lot of uh, people I've seen do with some of the research I've been doing on the vanilla is when they make it like in a bottle like this um, as they start to get low, they'll pour off their extract into a mason jar like this to continue using. And then they'll add in a couple of fresh vanilla beans, not very many, just a couple. And then they'll refill it with some more alcohol and then let it sit in the cabinet steep until it's ready to go. So I encourage you to try this, make it at home. It is super easy to do and give it a try in your recipes after you let it sit for a while and let me know how you like it. I was pleasantly surprised and will make my own vanilla from now on. I, I have really enjoyed cooking with this. 
Um, it has a really good strong vanilla flavor to it. Definitely more noticeable than what the vanilla extract I was buying from the store. A more noticeable flavor than the, the extract from the store. So if you make it, let me know how you like it once it steeps for at least those two months. Once again, I recommend letting it steep a little bit longer. Some people let it steep for a year. But let me know how you like it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great evening and have a blessed night.